Welcome to the Superfast Touch Designer tutorial series. In this tutorial, we're going to create an organic rhizome simulation using the POPs family in Touch Designer. The core technique I've developed here focuses on how to modulate the presence or intensity of noise applied to a line or series of points using a pattern CHOP as the main modulator. The goal of this composition is to explore how to generate lines that emerge from a clear root or base, distribute themselves across a surface, and grow in an organic way like the natural root networks of grass or bamboo that grow outward beneath the surface, forming interconnected rhizomes. Chapter 1, Overview. The first section, called Generator Lines, is simply a sequence where we use a point generator to get the initial positions, and a line that will be cloned based on the positions from the point generator. After that, we use a line metrics to obtain the vert index and connect it to a noise to generate the first organic movement for each line. In the second section, we move on to the most important part of this tutorial, where we perform the calculations that simulate rhizomatic roots. To do this, we'll create a chop pattern and a lookup channel that will retrieve values from the pattern using a specific index. Then, we'll connect everything into a math mix, where we'll resolve the entire set of calculations that will make this operation work. Finally, in the render section, I've created a circle and a line metrics to activate the tangents allowing the circles to follow the line's position correctly. Although not strictly necessary, I've added a copy to place these circles around each line, creating a more interesting structure. At the end, I've used two geo components, one to render the lines and another to render the points. We won't go into detail on that because you can already find it in other tutorials. With that said, let's move on with the tutorial. A quick pause. If we haven't met yet, I'm Okamirufu, and my life's purpose is to create, inspire, and educate through my work as a creative technologist focused on touch designer. I'm jumping in just for a moment to let you know that I've built a growing community on school where you'll find beginner and intermediate courses, exclusive tutorials, and a library of downloadable project files, including special bundles you won't find anywhere else. But more than that, it's an active, thriving space. For example, in one of the exclusive tutorials I uploaded recently, there are already tons of people interacting, sharing project files, asking questions, and helping each other. It goes far beyond a traditional academic setting. I've put a lot of energy into making it practical, efficient, and fun. And the best part? This space is slowly integrating all the value I've already built on Patreon, all in one place for the same price. I truly hope to see you there, sharing knowledge, experimenting together, and asking the questions that help us all grow. I'll leave all the links in the description. Chapter 2, Network. Let's start by creating a point generator pop. We'll choose the circle shape and set it to 200 points. Here you can try different amounts depending on your graphics card. For the orientation, since we want the lines to grow from the ground upward, the Z to X plane works well. I'll increase the radius a bit to 1.5 on each axis. Now we create a line and reset its values, setting 0 and 1 in the second position so we get a vertical line. We also need to increase the line's divisions from 20 to 100 points. This will depend on how you want the result to look. The more points, the smoother the lines, but also higher GPU usage. Perfect. Now we just connect the line directly into a copy pop. Right click and create a copy. Then connect the point generator into the second input of the copy. Now add a line metrics dot and make sure to enable the option Vert Index Inline Strip Normalized. We'll use that later for the lookup channel. Finally, connect a noise. And for now, you can use these same parameters for the sake of the tutorial. Later on, you'll have a lot of room to explore new variations. Now, go to the Output tab and rename the attribute created by the noise to something like P Noise because when we do the math, we'll be calculating the original position's P along with the new positions created by the noise. Don't forget to animate the noise using absolute time seconds divided by five, or whatever timing works best for you. Up to this point, one important thing to note, when we define a custom output name in the noise, like P noise, we stop applying the noise to the original P attribute. 
so we stop seeing the lines moving in the viewer. This can be confusing because it might seem like the noise isn't working anymore. To confirm it's still applied, the best tool you can use is a pop to dat operator. Search for the column with the new attribute we created and confirm that we have values under PNoise. Three numbers for the XYZ coordinates. Now let's connect a lookup channel followed by a math mix. Don't worry about the error you'll see in the lookup channel. We're about to fix that. To fix it, Create a chop pattern and select the ramp option. A short length of 100 is perfect and set number of cycles to one. I also increased the amplitude to 3.5. But as always, you can vary this based on your exploration. Finally, drag the chop pattern into the lookup channel. For lookup attribute, use the line attribute called vert index norm. Select that and leave the rest as is. As the name for the new attribute, you can call it noise modulation. And now comes the most fun part. We'll perform a series of mathematical operations to create this rhizomatic effect. Once you complete this, you'll have learned the most important concept of the entire tutorial. The first operation is to subtract the noise positions from the original positions. So set up an A subtracted by B operation. In the first scope, select the noise positions, P noise. And in the second, the original positions, P. We'll call this result delta. The second operation is to multiply delta by the values from the lookup channel, noise modulation. Set it to A multiply by B. With delta in the first scope and noise modulation in the second, We'll call this result delta mod. Finally, to get the desired effect, we need to add the original positions P to the result of the previous operation, delta mod. At this point, you'll see the noise applied to our rhizome-like lines. The root doesn't move because its values are multiplied by zero. And gradually, from bottom to top, you'll see the noise activating. This happens linearly because we're using a ramp from zero to one, but you can change the ramp's shape and try different results. Now, since I want all the roots to grow from a single point starting at zero X, zero Y, and zero Z, we'll apply one last operation to the final result, create a new operation and multiply the final P by noise modulation. This gives us the effect of all roots emerging from the center, just like how rhizomes often behave in nature. If you'd like to understand in much more detail how this math works, I recommend joining the conversation on my school, where in addition to courses and project files, you'll find study groups where we analyze each tutorial more deeply. Now for the final details, connect a new line metrics to the math mix and enable the tangents. Above that, create a circle with ZX plane. And reduce the scale to around 0.025. The rest can stay the same. Now connect a copy to the circle. And the line metrics to the second input of the copy. Go to the template tab and enable template rotate to vector. Select plus Y for the direction and choose the tangent attribute. Now we have all these tiny circles cloned along the skeleton of our rhizomes. Connect this to your geo component and we're done. Since I also want to render the lines, I'll just drag this result into a select operator that's connected to a second geo component. And with that, we've finished the tutorial. I hope you've successfully completed this tutorial. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and smash the like button. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. I hope you've successfully